Hello and welcome to this lesson on the centre of mass, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to understand what is meant by the term centre of mass. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can understand what is meant by the centre of mass of an object. Understand that the centre of mass of a uniform regular solid is at its centre and explain the link between the centre of mass and stability. So we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQA AQA A level physics specification 3.4.1.2 moments. So, the centre of mass is where we assume all of the mass and the weight of an object to be concentrated, as shown in the following diagram. Now here, if the object has a uniform density, we would assume the centre of mass to be in the centre of the object. Now at the centre of mass, we draw a vector representing the weight, and this always acts towards the centre of the Earth, and we call this the line of action. Now on a force diagram, the weight of an object must be drawn at the centre of mass regardless of the object. This happens because we assume all of the mass to be at this point, so we, it means that all of the weight is assumed to be found at this point. So it's very important that you do not draw your weight acting at a different place compared to the centre of mass. So on the screen now, you can see an incorrect force diagram, because our line of action of our weight is not acting from the centre of mass. Same here same here but here we have a correct force diagram because our line of action is now acting vertically down from the center of mass of the object now if the center of mass is at the center of the object the forces either side of it are the same so therefore the forces are balanced in the object now as we assume all of the weight acts from the center of mass this would mean that the body is in equilibrium therefore at the center of mass the forces on an object either side of it are balanced so therefore at the center of mass the turning forces or the moments on an object either side of it are balanced so what this means is that at the center of mass the body will always be balanced so if the center of mass and the line of action of the weight are inside an object's base it means it is balanced. Now this is a very important idea because if the line of action is inside the base of an object we know our object will be stable and will not fall over. This is because if this is the case the forces and the moments acting on the object are balanced there is no resultant force causing the object to topple over. However if the line of action is outside the base of the object the object is unstable and will fall over. So this can happen when an object is tilted. So now now, the moments are not balanced, there's a resultant moment on the object and this will cause an object to topple over. Now the, the centre of mass of an object is the point located at the object's average position of all the particles of mass that make up the object. So the average position of all the particles of mass of an object will be the geometric centre of the object only if the object is symmetrical in three dimensions and homogeneous. I, what we mean by that is that it has the same density at all points inside the object. Now for other objects, the centre of mass will not be the geometric centre and can even be outside the object or in an area of the object which has no mass inside of it so for example in a hole in the object now we must be aware of how to find the center of masses of different objects so there are different ways to find the center of mass of an object now for all objects the center of mass is directly below a point where the object can be freely balanced now an object can be balanced if a pivot is placed at the center of mass so this happens because the forces and moments are balanced on either side of the center of mass it is an equilibrium so in this diagram here, a pencil is balanced on a finger. So we can see that where it is balanced, the forces and moments on either side of this balance point or pivot must equal each other. So therefore the center of mass must lie in the same plane as where the object freely balances. So we can then draw a line of action down from the pivot. Here is an example of a TV remote balance on a finger. Once again, the center of mass must lie in the same plane as where the object freely balances. So again, our line of action is drawn down from the pivot. Here, a can is balanced on a finger. So again, okay, the center of mass must lie in the same place as where an object freely balances. So the line of action is always drawn down from the pivot or balance point. So if you try to balance an object on your finger, you can work out where the center of mass is by the point at which it balances upon.
Now you can find the center of mass of a symmetrical object by looking at its symmetry. So for symmetrical objects, the center of mass lies at the point of intersection of the lines of symmetry. So if we look at this particular object here, we can see different lines of symmetry in our square. So you would draw in a number of lines of symmetry in the object, at least three or four, and where they intersect or cross, that is where your centre of mass will be. So you can see for this square, it is in the dead centre. Now the third way in which to find the centre of mass of an object is what, when an object is suspended and hanging freely in equilibrium, the centre of mass is directly beneath the point of suspension. So in this example, an object is freely hung, so in this example of a hanging basket. So the centre of mass must lie somewhere in the plane of the point of suspension. And you can see this with our line of action, because it's always directly below where an object is freely hung. So the centre of mass must be directly below where an object can hang freely, so where an object hangs when nothing else is providing a force. So to find exactly where the centre of mass of the object is, you must hang it freely from several different places and draw down a line of action for each and see where they intersect or cross. So to clarify, there are three different methods to find the centre of mass of an object. So for all objects, the centre of mass is directly below a point where the object can freely balance upon. For symmetrical objects, the centre of mass lies at the point of intersection of lines of symmetry and when an object is suspended and hanging freely in equilibrium the center of mass is directly beneath the point of suspension so we can use this principle to determine the center of mass of an irregular shaped object which is really useful in the real world as it allows you to understand how objects can be balanced so the center of gravity of a thin sheet or a lamina of cardboard or metal can be found by suspending it freely from two or three points so small holes are made round the edges of an irregular shaped object, a pin is put through one of the holes and held firmly in a clamp and stands so the object can swing freely. Now a length of string is then attached to the pin. The other end of the string has a heavy mass attached to it. This arrangement is what we call a plumb line. So the object will stop swinging when its center of gravity is vertically below the point of suspension. A line is drawn on the object along the vertical string of the plumb line. The center of gravity must lie on this line. So then to find the exact position of the center of gravity, the process is repeated with the object suspended from different holes. The center of gravity will be at the point of intersection of the lines drawn on the object. Now we have a weight because of the force of gravity on Earth acting on us. So each part of our body, our arms, legs and head, experience a force caused by the force of gravity. However, it is much simpler to picture the overall effect of gravity acting at a single point, and this is our centre of gravity. So the centre of gravity of an object is defined as the point where all of the weight may be considered to act. So for a person standing upright, the centre of gravity is roughly in the middle of the body behind the navel. For a sphere, it is at the centre. Now it's much easier to solve problems if we simply indicate an object's weight by a single force acting at the centre of gravity rather than a large number of forces acting on each part of the object. Now for a symmetrical object with a uniform density in a uniform gravitational field, the centre of mass and the centre of weight are in the same position. So an object is made of identical atoms, each with its own weight. Now the resultant gravitational force on the object will act through the centre of gravity, which coincides with the centre of mass. And the centre of mass is a point which um, any externally applied force will produce linear motion, but not rotational motion as it's freely balanced. So to summarise what we've learned in today's lesson, we understand what the centre of mass is and the centre of weight, and we have knowledge that the position of the centre of mass of a uniform regular solid is at its centre. So if we've been successful and we've learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to understand what is meant by the term centre of mass of an object, understand that the centre of mass of a uniform regular solid is at its centre, and explain the link between the centre of mass and stability. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on the centre of mass, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.